perhaps the expectation that was placed on a player with, with so much talent, so much ability, and where necessarily that maybe petered out a little bit towards the end. But it's only when you realise how tough it was as a kid for you that you kind of realised there was not much stability growing up. What was life like? Yeah, it was difficult. Um, you know, uh, it was, coming from where I was, it's, it's very, you know, very rough. And your father was a drug dealer? Yes, he was, you know. He wasn't your traditional drug dealer. He actually tried to provide for all his kids and, and, and with all of them. And I, and I didn't really go without. Um, and there's a quote in the book where he says, um, on a, when I tried to steal a CD and then I got in trouble with the police about it, he says, son, um, if you need anything, I'll buy it for you. And if I can't, I'll steal it. Um, and that's the kind of man it was. And what but that's the kind of guidance you're getting. And people will question what sort of a man would suggest that that's the right way to talk to his son. But that was the life that you were being sort of brought that's up. That's the life we lived. Um, it was very difficult for a black man to, you know, get a, uh, a good job to provide for his family, um, being a, a single parent. When you're young and you, 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 you live a certain, a certain path, you just think it's a norm, yeah. so you don't know any different. He, uh, he was a dealer in Italy, <clears throat> but then things turned out to the worst and he went inside and he got caught and he was, uh, had a prison sentence, came out and then became an addict himself. And you say he tried to provide for you, but of course, uh, one of the stories you tell, one of the heartbreaking stories mm. on your 14th birthday, is when he took your birthday money from you um, because he wanted it to spend on drugs. Yeah, that was um, a, a tough, tough period um, in my childhood and, and it really did hurt a lot. Um, and that's when I think things started to fade um, with, with, my, with my dad. And I think I, I left Nottingham when I was 16 um, to go to, to Arsenal. And, and from there, we try, I tried to rebuild build the relationship with him. Um, but that's when he was at his worst. And then he'd done his, over the years, he'd done his best to get on the straight and narrow, which he did. So you had the jump from your 14th birthday, your dad stealing your birthday money to buy drugs to suddenly at 15, 16, being signed for one of the biggest signings of the time and finding yourself, you know, in a totally different world with money, you know, with expectation. I mean, it, that then you probably didn't know, but now looking back, what a thing to take on. Yeah, it was, it was a big thing to take on. It was, it was difficult, you know, because I was homesick as well. At the same time, I was missing my friends. Um, I would travel back every weekend. Um, so I was never really settled um, in, in London. And, you know, and, and trying to break into a team like Arsenal is, was, 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 was difficult. And, you know, the longer it went on and the longer I didn't play, that's when I started to kind of lose my way and lose my focus and, and you know, enjoy the luxuries that, that came with, with the, the stardom. So these are the wild times that have come out of your book that you can read about in the book, but have also made headlines in the papers this week, haven't they? The wild partying, the girls, the many girls. And in fact, you also talk about Ashley Cole. And, and you're very honest in it, Jermaine, mm. to, to the point where I kind of reading it going, I'm not sure, I, I, I'm quite surprised you've put some of these stories, some of the, the, the sort of the girls that you had back to the apartment with you and, and Ashley together and the way that you treated them. And I think you've been very honest about how ashamed you are about that behaviour. Uh, now, what, how do you feel about that period of your life at the time when, when the partying and the money and all the luxuries took over actually what you were all supposed to be doing, which was playing football at the highest level? Yeah, uh, like when I look back now, it's, it's something I'm not proud of. But like I said, I'm, you know, if I'm going to tell the story, I'm going to have to tell it all and be honest. Mm. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a different person now. I've grown up and I'm a lot wiser. But that stage of my life was due to not, you know, breaking through. You know, being uh, at 16, being labelled, you know, the, the next one, the kid, mm. and then making your first debut um, at 21. You know, it was a lot long to take off. To it was long, lo yeah, long period not to, to, to get your chance. And, you know, a lot of big frustration started to kick in. And, you know, not having my family around me, not having my close friends at the time, you know, trying to help me out. I had no one to turn to. So, you know, um, that was my way of probably dealing with it mm. emotionally. It's difficult because, especially when you're not playing, all you want to do is football, you want to play. Um, no matter where it is or what team or what level, you, you just want to play. And, you know, when you've been shunned out by a manager and transfer deadlines, it's like a, a new lease of life to, mm. to move on and join a new club. And, fresh you know, start. Fresh start, kick start your career. Because people say, all that money, why can't they just behave and do well? But does the money actually make a difference? No, it doesn't, because um, obviously it's, it's great to be able to um, have money and, and be financial secure and to support, um, you know, mm. your family and whatnot. But 
the stress that you get mm. when you're not playing, the stress that you, you, it, it, it takes on your family. Mm. You know, you, can, you come home and you, you're miserable. You don't want to go to work. You don't, you don't look forward to going to training. Mm. Um, and I know a lot of players are coming out and saying that. It, you know, everyone thinks we've got it easy, but the, the mental side of it, it's, it's very difficult. And if you're not a strong person, you can break easy. Do you have any regrets? Yeah, I do. I have um, numerous regrets, but... Um, what would you know, be your biggest regrets, you think? Definitely the way, you know, um, I was with, with women. Uh, and, and that probably does stem from, from my childhood and, and the drink driving. Growing up, I did have to, you know, learn the hard way and kind of learn on my own as well. Um, but like, because sometimes my father wasn't there. You know, um, now he's, 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 he's such a great man and, you know, um, for what he's done and what he's been through, you know, what? I've, I've got to, you know, be grateful and, you know, and thank him as well. Um, I wouldn't be the person in here today if it wasn't for him. Are there dreams now that you'd like to live? Is life better now? Holly um, said in the VT you might be going into Celebrity Big Brother. Is uh, that something you can confirm, Jermaine? They're just probably rumours. Um, I don't know of yet. So. They're probably rumours. There, there may be rumours. There may be rumours. I mean, is, that, I mean could, is television something you'd like to do more of? Um, I enjoy television. Um, so if the opportunity does arise, um, uh, it's something I won't shy away from.